called to teach tonight. So if you would could please um, open your Bibles, 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. I'm going to ask you if you are physically able to stand on your feet to stand for the reading of God's word. 1 Samuel chapter 1. We're going to start with verse number 9. We're going to give you time to grab your Bibles and find the text. Y'all got it? I still hear some papers flapping. All right, we're going to go ahead and read. It's on the screens if you need it. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9. The scripture says, Then Hannah rose after eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She, Hannah, greatly distressed prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a son, then I will give him to the Lord. And all the days of his life, a razor shall never come upon his head. Now it came about as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli was watching her mouth. As for Hannah, she was speaking in her heart. Only her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. So Eli thought she was drunk. Then Eli said to her, how long will you make yourself drunk? Put away your wine from you. In other words, what you doing drinking in the house of the Lord? You going to come in here drunk into the temple. But look at how Hannah replied. No, my Lord, I am a woman oppressed in spirit, for I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant as a worthless woman, for I have spoken until now out of my great concern and provocation. I've been provoked to prayer. And then Eli answered and said, God of Israel, Israel, grant your petition that you have asked of him. Go in peace. And made of God of Israel, grant your petition that you have asked of him. This is the word of the Lord. The church said, amen. Amen. I want to preach tonight from the topic, when your pastor makes a mistake. That was a great great reaction, by the way. That was just classic. Holy Spirit, you are in this place as you always are. Every time your scripture is read, there's already a blessing because your word is blessed. But we become a blessed people when we are hearers and doers of the word. And so, Father, would you speak to me now, speak through me now as the shepherd of this house and as I teach on the importance of the sheep having a shepherd. And as we continue to appreciate pastors all across the world, let this word, dear God, help someone once again um, walk according to the flock and become all that you've called them to be. Lord, would you open the ears and the hearts of those who are listening, whether they're here or watching online. May you be glorified in this moment. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Tonight, we take a familiar passage of scripture, and it's certainly one that I have preached before in different contexts. This narrative of Hannah crying out and desiring a child is often used during Mother's Day. You've heard it preached several different ways, usually dealing with Hannah. Now, Hannah's a bad girl in the scripture. She, the backstory, um, is the sister wife. Somebody say amen. amen. Scripture is often uh, descriptive but not prescriptive. And there was a time where people held multiple wives. So in this moment, descriptively, she was one of two wives to a man named Elkanah. And the problem that Hannah had is that she could not bear children. But the other problem that she had is that the other sister wife would make fun of her because of it and would provoke her and would do mean things towards her to the point that she was grieved and dealing with anxiety. And so one day she comes to the house of the Lord to pray, to cry out to the Lord because she wants badly to have a child. And 
She so badly wants a child that she offers the child back to the Lord before the child arrives. And Lord, if you ever give me a child, this child will belong to you. I will give them back to you. And so the context of the scripture is that she's in the temple praying out of her distress. Have you ever been so distressed, so distraught that you were seemingly discombobulated, so uh, racked by the difficulty of life that you couldn't quite get your words together, but your heart was in the right place. And Hannah is praying and crying out to the Lord in the sanctuary, in the temple. And there's two main characters in this scripture. There's Hannah and there is Eli. Now I told you we focus on Hannah. Hannah has the longest prayer of any woman found in scripture in this passage. It is Hannah's faith and belief that God can bring fruit to her womb that eventually produces Samuel, who became the next great prophet of Israel. But I want to take time today to deal with Eli and to talk about Eli because Eli is a participant, and watch this, a conduit for the blessing that has to flow into Hannah's life. There's no blessing of Samuel in this scripture without Eli opening his mouth and releasing a blessing on Hannah. But here's what I want you to focus on. What if Hannah had gotten upset when Eli made a mistake? That's what I want to deal with because in today's culture, we are easily offended. Some of you look at the response of Hannah in the scripture and you're offended for Hannah. Because that's the type of society that we live in. People get offended for other people who ain't even offended. And then we feel compelled to speak up in office because of what happened to somebody else. We live in a culture that is easily offended. And the question is, how are we as people in the body of Christ supposed to deal with with the offense of the heart. And might I suggest to you that perhaps there are certain blessings that are held up in our life because the connection of offense in our heart is rooted in bitterness and resentment and we cannot receive the full blessing of God if we are bitter and resentful because the scripture says get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander and to hold offense is to hold on to bitterness. And then to take it a step further, what if we are bitter towards the people who hold the key to our blessing? What if we are bitter to those whom God has placed in the earth to help administer, to be a conduit from heaven into the earth? What if the very person that we're upset at is the only person who can speak into our life, which gets us into the complexity of pastoring because sometimes pastors make mistakes. What do you do when your pastor makes a mistake? Eli made a mistake. He saw something, and because he is human, he saw one aspect of what was happening. But he's not omnipotent. He didn't know exactly what was happening in his heart. He was just trying to handle his responsibility as the priest of the house to make sure that there was sanctity in the house of God, and he didn't mean any offense, and he called it, and it wasn't quite it. But I want you to see the honor of Hannah. I want you to see the grace in Hannah's response because some of y'all know it couldn't have been you. It couldn't have been you. You would have gone slap off. You're already on the edge. Can't find no peace at home. Came to the sanctuary of God. This is supposed to be the place where I can find some peace. And here come him. Hannah's response models something for us, that she did not respond with an attitude. She didn't respond with anger. She responded with honor and submission. And for some of us, we really wrestle with that because we want to say it how we feel it. Because all of our life, we have not been able to express ourselves. We feel like we are unseen. We feel like we are overlooked. And we take every opportunity now that we've been 
liberated, so to speak, to express our mind. But what if there is an invisible barrier called honor that will not allow you to dishonor what God has honored? What if in God's ecosystem somehow, some way, come here, David. David had Saul actively chasing him, trying to take out his life. But David was such a man in honor that he would not even touch the person who was trying to take him out. Because David understood that if there would be honor in the office that God had eventually called him to, the way he handled those who were in honor would be the way that honor was dispensed to him. What if there's something about honor that is complexity, that is complex, that is a bit complicated because it is countercultural? What if there should be a governor on the mouth of the believer? What if there is a seatbelt, if you will, because one of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Your ability to not say the first thing that comes to mind, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The power of death and life is in your tongue, and what you say might just put a dampening on your blessing. So Eli made a mistake. Can we agree that we all make mistakes? Many mistakes are unintentional. And I want you to look at Eli from a different perspective because Hannah had issues, but if you read Eli's story, you realize that he had issues. Hannah had drama in her household. (laughs) Eli had drama in his household. Hannah was dealing with a, a, a medical reality in her barrenness, and you see that eventually Eli is old of age and his eyes become dim and he's overweight and he's dealing with some physical realities as well. And I want you to see how God works. Because somehow, some way, Hannah is still blessed despite the mistake that the shepherd made. And as we look at how God uses Eli, we want to take a moment to reflect on our relationships with leadership. And when I say leadership, of course, we're talking about the house of God and the shepherd and the sheep. But honor is transferable. It is a transferable skill. Honor your father and your mother so that your days might be long in the earth. There's something that God has trained in the very scriptures to help us walk in honor. And when we begin to exhibit honor in the primary places, honor becomes our banner. And now we begin to walk in certain ways that will not only release blessings within the house where authority is distributed, you'll find blessings on your job. You'll find blessings in the marketplace. You'll find blessings with people who who may not know you from Adam, who may not have even a sense of the working of God, but God will strategically use them to dispense something to you because you understand the ecosystem of honor. What happens when your pastor makes a mistake? Eli makes a mistake, but he recovers. And ultimately, you know the end of the matter for Hannah Hannah receives a blessing. Let's start with number one. Your pastor might make mistakes, but still has a mantle. When I say your pastor, I'm speaking to the nations now. There are people who tune in who aren't members of New Vision. And as I speak, I have to speak with an apostolic authority for those who are here and those who are watching online. You need to know that although... Your pastor, when a pastor is selected by God, placed in the office, a pastor makes mistakes but still has a mantle. In the Old Testament scripture, the mantle represented the calling. There were prophets who would have a cloak, a mantle. Heard of a prophet named Elijah? Elijah had a mantle. Elijah had a cloak. When Elijah was having the most difficult moment in his life. Elijah was a man just like us, but he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it didn't rain. Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel. God used Elijah to perform a miracle where fire came down from heaven, and he conquered all of the prophets of Baal, but one word from Jezebel sent him into a tailspin. 
Because Elijah, although we had supernatural access to the heavenly realm, he still was human. Tell me, how do you go from challenging King Ahab? How do you go from standing flat-footed and looking at all of the prophets who want to do you harm? How do you go from building an altar and being so confident in God's ability and power to bring fire from heaven that you tell them to bring water jugs and to put water in the trench and you're confident that God's going to show up and then God shows up and then God uses you to judge those people who were against him and yet one word from a chick named Jezebel sends you running. And when I say running, I'm talking about Forrest Gump running. He was running. He went into hiding. He went into depression. Prophets and pastors deal with mental health difficulties too. He was so exhausted, he slept. He met an angel. and What the angel give him? Some food and some water and let him sleep off a little bit. Prophets and pastors deal with exhaustion too. But we see God gently working with Elijah and then eventually goes into the cleft of a rock and he wasn't, God didn't show up in all of the hoopla. He showed up in a still, quiet voice. But the scripture says that the prophet took his cloak, his mantle, and covered himself and then he heard from the Lord because the prophet's mantle represented his calling. And Elijah was reminded of his calling so that he could hear from God to get direction as to how to move forward so he could continue to do what God had placed him in the earth to do. The mantle represents calling. And every pastor who's called by God has a calling, a commission, even in the process of installation. And you'll see some things when we get to the 4020 and we have the ceremony. I won't be wearing Jordans in a sweatshirt. That there will be a robe and the robe is a reminder of the calling, the mantle. Even though a pastor makes mistakes, they still have a mantle. The mantle represents the office. When Elijah went up to heaven, carried away by the chariots of fire, he dropped the mantle on Elisha. Elisha picked up the mantle and continued the ministry and did double of what Elijah did because he received the mantle and the calling. And you need to know that the person who wears the mantle underneath is still imperfect. That the mantle doesn't mean that you don't make mistakes. We hear from God, but we can't read minds. We, we discern weighty matters, and part of being a pastor is sometimes having to ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom, to discern, to mediate, to judge, but we can't read minds. There's limitations that we have to this flesh, and we rely on the power of God, but don't you ever forget that the mantle represents what God has placed on a person. The mantle cannot be manufactured. The mantle is not, see, nowadays people, they want to become a bishop. They want to become clergy. You go on Amazon and get a clergy collar. You, you go online and order your, your bishop's attire and ain't nobody poured oil on you. Nobody has recognized you. No one has vetted you. It's not just the cloth. It is the calling and it is the power of God that shows up in a moment to confirm what's happening in heaven with what's happening on earth, to call an individual, to place them in an office. Something happens. Something shifts. I don't know what you think about 4020, but the ceremony itself, I'm telling you, there's something that's going to shift. There is a mantle that's going to evolve, an office that's going to be stepped into in the heavenly realms, and it is supernatural, and it boggles the mind, and it's beyond comprehension. But people make mistakes, even though they have a mantle. Your pastor and leader might make mistakes but still has a mantle. The mantle represents the office. Until someone is removed from the office, the office is still the office. See, in today's culture, you can be as crooked as two left feet and still be a notary. <laughs> and the stamp still works until somebody revokes 
the authority that's been given to you. You can, you can still be working some things out and, 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 and still you can work for the government. You can do all these different things. But until you are removed from the office in which you have been placed, you still have the office. Now, for those of you who are saying, man, is that, is that a license for, for pastors to do whatever they want? Here's my second point. Your pastor might be anointed, but it's still accountable. Your pastor might be anointed, but he's still accountable. Who is your pastor accountable to? God himself. And some of y'all are trying to math the math. How's that math math? And I don't get it. You got to understand the heavenly realms. God sees everything. You want to know how I know? Because I want you to take some time to examine the life of Eli. You got to understand the backstory behind Eli. Eli represents the priesthood. Eli had two sons who were wilding out, and Eli could not check them. They were part of the priesthood. They weren't just sons and part of the family. They had inherited the priesthood, and they were misusing their power. They were abusing the sacrificial system. They were sleeping with the doorkeepers. And God judged Eli for the sins of his sons and the fact that he did not do what he was supposed to do. And when you continue reading 1 Samuel, you'll see that God sent a prophecy to Eli that his sons were going to die, both of them on the same day, and he would die as well. And things continued, history caught up with the moment, his sons died in battle. Listen, but when Eli heard that the Ark of the Covenant was stolen by their adversaries. The scripture says that he was overweight in his seat. He fell over, broke his neck, and died. Not because his sons were wilding, but because the presence of God. God began to speak through Samuel because Samuel would become the next prophet of Israel. And God used Eli, watch this, listen to me, in his imperfections to still teach Samuel. Samuel was one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. And who trained him? It's a mystery. Because Eli was flawed, but Eli still understood the assignment because he understood the significance of the mantle. God began to speak through Samuel. As a child, you guys are familiar with that moment. Now, here we got Samuel. He's growing up in the priesthood. His mom would visit him every year, make him a little baby ephod, make him a little baby robe and deliver it. And he grew up in the priesthood. And then one night as he was sleeping, he began to hear a voice and he would cry out, Eli, Eli. Eli said, go back to sleep. He would hear a voice again saying, Samuel, Samuel. And he would say, Eli, somebody's talking to me. And he would go back to sleep. And then Eli said, wait a minute. No, 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 no. The Lord is speaking. Next time when the Lord speaks to you, say, yes, Lord, your servant is listening. It was Eli who taught Samuel how to hear from God, this great man of God who never had a word fall to the ground because of his relationship. It was Eli who taught him how to listen to God because he had the mantle despite his mistakes. But he suffered because he wasn't in right relationship with the Lord. Here's what you got to understand about those who are commissioned by God. We talked about it last week in the book of Hebrews, how you are to obey and submit because shepherds have watch over your souls and have to give account. If we misuse you, you better trust and believe God's going to get us. And don't you think for a second that anyone can escape the gaze of a holy God, a sovereign God who sits on the throne, who reigns with all power in his hands. God is not sleeping on the job. But we all better be grateful for the mercy, the mercy and the grace that's afforded to us. Because if we ever had to account for everything we did or we didn't do, there would be nothing. Everything would be smitten. We would all self-combust under the weight of the holiness of God if he called us to task for every little thing we did or didn't do. So here it is. Pray for your pastor. Pray for God's mercy over his life. Pray that he will walk upstanding before the Lord and before the people. 
Because if not, the wrath of God is coming. And judgment begins at the house of the Lord. Don't you forget that God sees everything. And for those who refuse to do what God says, woe is them. And for those who really love the Lord, they don't want the woe. They don't want the wrath. They'd rather self-correct than to receive the wrath of God. They'd rather take themselves out of play. Listen to me. I don't have to do this forever. If I ever got to a place where I lost my mind, I will give it up. My soul is more important than a title or a position or some sense of identity tied to a job, a responsibility, assignments come and they go. But the holiness of God is nothing to play with. God gives pastors who are anointed but accountable. And God dealt with Eli. Severely, but God still used Eli. Because Eli was God's responsibility. And God wiped out his sons. Wiped out his seed. But but God is so God, he used Eli to usher in Samuel who, who, who rectified what his natural sons could not establish. Anointed but accountable. You see foolishness on the internet? God's going to hold people accountable. People taking advantage of people, pastors taking advantage of people, pastors doing all types of devious acts. We have to account for the sheep. I hear Bishop McLaughlin say it all the time, if you like lamb chops, you shouldn't be a shepherd. Some of you will get that on the way home if, you, <laughs> if your favorite meal is lamb chops. Maybe you shouldn't be a shepherd. Because you're here to protect the sheep, not devour them. But here it is, number three, and then we're done. Your pastor might be broken but still has a blessing. There's still a blessing in the voice of the priest. Because all the issues we were talking about with Eli were still going on behind the scenes when he had the divine encounter with Hannah and the temple and he made the mistake. But yet God still said, bless her. And Hannah had enough honor to recognize the mantle to not speak sideways towards the man of God. And what did she walk out with? An answered prayer request. Did she pray? Yes, she prayed. And she prayed and labored in her prayer. But it took a word from the man of the house, aptly spoken at just the right time, to cause her spirit to be at rest. And she went home, according to the scripture, and knew Elkanah again. And here comes the child after an encounter with the imperfect man of God. You got to understand that even though pastors are broken, there's still a blessing that your leaders aren't perfect. And what we'll do is if we're we're immature, we will, watch this, we we will get so focused on their imperfections that you still miss the mantle. And that's the strategy of the enemy because if he can get you to a place where you're perpetually offended, then he knows that he's blocking blessing over your life. If he can get you in a place of constant pause and caution and consideration and not ever trust those whom God has placed in your life to guide your souls, the enemy knows what he's doing. He's trying to hinder you from becoming all that God has called you to be. Listen, When God gives you a shepherd, there's certain things that the shepherd sees. There's a certain connection that the shepherd has. And once again, we're just flesh and blood, but we walk in a mantle that sometimes we don't even understand. There's healing that flows from us. And the thing you need to understand about a a, a pastor, a pastor, I know we talk about five-fold ministry, but I believe that if there's five-fold ministry, then the pastor teacher is the thumb has to touch each of the five fold because when the prophet comes, the prophet can come and prophesy and go somewhere else and prophesy, but the shepherd is still there. 
I can't prophesy everything I see because then the sheep will lead and I got to tend to the sheep. So I hold back on my prophetic edge. Prophets will tell it like it is, cut, 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 and then go to the next city. But a pastor will hold his or her tongue because there is a long-term place that you're trying to develop people. Evangelists can come and share the same gospel message over and over again. Leave town and take the same message. Wouldn't that be easy if I just preached the same message? I just went to different places. But I got to bake fresh bread every night. This is fresh bread. I, ain't, I, ain't, I didn't search online. Sermonspice.com and sermonoutlines.com. I got to tell, tell the people something on on Tuesday, Doc, I got to tell him something. <laughs> maybe, just maybe, I hear from God. Because you have to develop people. But yet, I still got to be evangelist. I still got to be prophet. I still got to be apostolic. I still got to teach and preach and pastor. Why? Because I have to give account for souls. And somehow, some way, God will use me however I need to be used. I'm not a healer, but I've prayed for people and they've been healed. Some of you have testimonies. It's because God placed you in my life, put you a part of this congregation to be a part of the flock for a divine reason. I'm just a conduit for what God wants to do. And people have to understand that when you're planted in good soil, when you're in the right place, when you're part of the right flock, there are blessings that will come into your life. I heard a preacher say, don't clog the oil. Sometimes we clog the oil in ignorance. Because it would have been real ignorant for Hannah to fuss out the very person whose words would bring blessing to her womb. So honor says, hold up. Honor says, I might be feeling a certain type of way, but I have to recognize the moment. Honor says, God puts people in my life, spiritual leaders. He's going to keep them accountable. Honor says, I'm going to pray for my pastor. Especially when he makes mistakes. The psyche of a human is interesting. We are complex beings with chemical stuff going on up here and all types of hormonal stuff happening in our hearts. And sometimes we can lose our way and we get in our feelings. But I need you to, to embrace foundation, not feelings. When we hear the word of God, it's to push us past our feelings to stand on truth. And the role of the shepherd is not to harm you, but to help you. And sometimes like Eli, I call it wrong at first. But, 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 but there's still enough Holy Spirit within me to correct course and to release what God said. So as we continue down this journey, this is bigger than just Pastor's Appreciation Month. God is returning the heart of the shepherd back to the sheep and the heart of the sheep back to the shepherd. There ought to be an affection that is guided by the Holy Spirit. They were not just here to be a bunch of individuals to get what we came to get. No, we have to become one flock, one people. God is dealing with the matters of the heart. It's not natural for us as believers. In a supernatural context where the Holy Spirit lives in every believer, it's not natural. It grieves the Holy Spirit for there to be consistent and chronic conflict within the body of Christ. If you don't understand your pastor, just pray for him. If your pastor's ever offended you, bring him before the Lord. Ask the Lord to help him. If he indeed be of God, then the Lord will guide him and direct him. If he's lost his path, trust me, the God of all creation knows how to tighten him up. And ultimately, we have to give account for the souls of those whom we leave. Father, I thank you so much. I thank you for this, this house of teaching and growth and development. I thank you that on a Tuesday night we can deal with a topic like this and we can engage and we can learn and we can take the Bible and we can read it again. And you give 
So much meat in your word that we can take and apply to our life. Father, I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. Those who are watching online via the broadcast, dear God, it's your desire that they would have a shepherd if they are sheep. But Father, you are looking for a cohesive flock. You're looking for people to operate and cooperate in harmony because only when there's unity will the blessing be commanded. You will not command the blessing in disunity. So Father, thank you for this season of unifying us, dear God. Lord, forgive me if I've offended anybody for anything. So many people, so many relationships, and I'm not perfect. I'll be the first person to admit it. Father, that you would clear the account between sheep and shepherd. That perhaps even the clearing of the account will now unclog the oil. That there might be a blessing, dear God, that even comes to my brokenness. Because the New Testament scripture says that the excellency is of the treasure, not of the vessel. That we are just privy pots. We're just earthen vessels to display what you're doing. So, Father, may it be all about you. Any mantles, you have given them. You manage them. You remove them. And you allow them to stay. Let us honor what you honor. Let us recognize what you recognize. Let us touch not our, your anointed, nor do your prophet no harm. Let us be the type of people who go to healthy spaces and recognize the imperfection of even our leaders and our spiritual people who pray instead of gossip, who pray instead of politic, who pray instead of withholding, who pray because we believe that you are Yahweh enough, you are God enough to take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good. You are God enough to handle those who mishandle your people. You are God enough to heal the womb. You are God enough to heal even the hurt of people hurt. So Father, we want to move forward with health and wellness and you. Thank you, Father, for your loving compassion towards your sheep. And thank you, Father, for your compassion towards shepherds. Shepherds need love too. Shepherds need guidance too. Shepherds need the voice of the Father in heaven. Confirmation. Encouragement. Shepherds deal with mental health too. Shepherds deal with everything that the sheep deal with. Yet they have a mantle that they cannot shake off. Help us, dear God, to help with that mantle by being the type of sheep who help and follow with joy that it might be profitable for them and profitable for the move of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to close up tonight looking forward to Sunday service. Um, in a congregation this, this full, and we're growing, y'all, in ways that you can see and can't see. There's a whole online audience. You guys uh, stick with us every week. And so um, this is a congregation that has hundreds of people, hundreds of people. There's absolutely positively no way I can shout out everybody's birthday. And so I try my best to stick to our elders and our pastoral leadership team because we give honor where honor is due. And every once in a while, one of them, their birthday happens during a service. Or else we would spend every service retroactively acknowledging birthdays. <laughs> and so it just so happened that today is Elder Mac's birthday and it happens to be a service day. And so... The lot has fallen on a Tuesday. And so we say happy birthday to you, Elder Matt. And so you can find a way to show him some love. And, and what I've tried to do as of late is go on our, our family band, our group. Our, we got our own little social network, if you didn't know. It'd be on and popping. If you don't know what the family band is, go to nvim.org and click the, the watch online button and scroll down, you'll see something that says family band. That's our social network. We've got 200 plus people on there. We do birthday shout outs for everybody. You can shout out anybody. Happy birthday. You shout yourself out. 
And so um, I've developed the practice of, of trying my best to get on there and to do a video shout out. Elder Chris's birthday was last week. It used to be there were only two elders, but now I got all these pastors. Lord have mercy. And I'm trying to honor everybody. And then every once in a while, somebody might sneak through who's not an elder or a pastor or a bishop or a key staff member. And because we're a place of unity, we can't feel a certain type of way because somebody shouted out their birthday. And don't nobody ever shout out my birthday. Human nature, we are complex chemical beings with the Holy Spirit of God living inside of us, helping to manage and put the super on the natural. So tell somebody it's all love. And if I never get the chance between now and tomorrow to tell you that I love you individually, let me just say it from the stage for all of you. Those of you watching online, I love you with the depths of my heart and my soul. You matter to God and you matter to me. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. He sees you. He hears you. And even when people make mistakes, we serve a God who never makes mistakes. Y'all got it? Come on, why don't you stand to your feet, grab somebody's hand. We're going to release the benediction, and then we're going to give, and we're going to go. This is a good old-fashioned benediction. <laughs> good old-fashioned benediction. Grab somebody's hand. Don't worry, COVID ain't going to get you. We got hand sanitizers. You need to... Scrub your hands afterwards. Don't worry, we got hand sanitizer all over the place. Sanctuary service, get the hand sanitizer ready. Father, I release a blessing over this congregation that even those who, who responded to the word instantaneously, they, 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 they cut their leader some slack. They, they recognized that mistakes happened and they cleared their account. Father, even now in this mass gathering, I release blessing, blessing, blessing. That even now people are believing you for things and just because they got the revelation and they're open now that they would receive blessing. The blessing of a father, of a shepherd, of the head of the house, dear God, the paternal blessing. Father, I release it now in the name of Jesus. Wombs open in the name of Jesus. Financial breakthrough in the name of Jesus healing and doctor's reports that that are uncomprehensible but we know it was you in the name of Jesus restoration of marriages supernaturally in the name of Jesus forgiveness and trauma being overcome in the name of Jesus anxiety leaving depression depression going away and never to return in the name of Jesus from A to Z you know what those blessings are. You distribute them through your Holy Spirit. I release it now. Hallelujah. I release it now. I release it now. Not in my flesh, but by the mantle that you've given me for this house, for, for these sheep. I release it now in the name of Jesus. The commanded blessing that comes from unity. The blessing that comes from reconciliation. The blessing that comes from a clear account that can now receive. The blessing of unclogged oil. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow. From the head down, let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Miracles, signs, and wonders that only you can do and facilitate, Father, simply because we agree with your word and we have embraced unity. Let it flow in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And this is not just our one-time cry. This is our culture that we will embrace. We'll walk in unity, talk in unity, live according to unity. Father, let your blessing persist beyond this moment and even as people give as they give being led by your spirit dear God I pray that you open up their ears that they might be obedient like they've never been obedient before not just concerning 
what they give tonight, but concerning areas of their life, dear God, let the brain fog flee in the name of Jesus. Let the let the mind be clear in the name of Jesus. Let the concepts that have been held up, that have been clogged up, let them let them flow. Let them flow. Let them flow. Let them flow because they've embraced your word. Let that which has been held up, let it flow in the name of Jesus. Nothing is impossible with you. Hallelujah. 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 I'm trying to move, but receive it. Receive it. If that was for you, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive the blessing of the shepherd of the house. Receive it. Walk in it. Embrace it. Father, I'm feeling led to pray for those who have torment in their dreams. Father, I speak peace right now in the name of Jesus. Peaceful sleep, peaceful sleep, peaceful rest. Quiet the voices in their head. Quiet the confusion in their brain. A peace that surpasses all understanding. May they sleep tonight like they haven't slept in years. We pray angels protection from the north, the south, the east, and the west. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind. It's a, a sound mind. It belongs to us. It is the heritage of the saints. A sound mind. A sound mind. We claim it in the name of Jesus. We claim it in the name of Jesus. Your protection is with us. We fear no one but you. We reverence you. We fear no one, but we reverence a holy God, and he's looking after us. Homes are blessed in the name of Jesus. No more strange occurrences, no more strange sounds that go bump in the night. There's an anointing, there's an oil, there's a blessing that we carry back with us. There's an authority that we walk in our home with because we're planted in good soil and the oil flows from the head down and the authority and the protection of God is flowing over his people hallelujah 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 we rebuke the enemy we rebuke the devourer we rebuke every demon every imp we renounce his stronghold over our lives we refuse to allow the enemy to have more authority than we have in you we claim authority in the holy spirit we claim authority according to the word of god we claim authority because we've been planted in good soil we're gonna bear fruit and the devourer will not devour it we're gonna bear fruit and it shall not fall before its time we're gonna mature we're gonna walk in the spiritual authority that god has given us we declare and decree that all the territory that we have taken as we've grown leap years over these past few weeks over these past few months accelerated growth we're not giving up the territory we're holding our ground we're digging our heels in and we're planting our flags and we're declaring that we are getting closer and closer to the next promised land that you have for us dear god we're not scared of the giants we're not scared of the adversaries whose report are we going to believe? We're going to believe the report of the Lord. So like Caleb and Joshua, we declare war against the enemy and the adversary. We declare that what God says belongs to us, belongs to us in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree that the land that God has given us, whether it's regarding our home and our kids and our family and our finances and the things that you've called us and commissioned us to do, we refuse 
to be afraid of the enemy because we're growing stronger in the word we're growing stronger in the anointing we're growing stronger in the power of the Holy Spirit and we walk in that power because that power has been fought for and contended for and that precious floor precious oil is flowing we thank you and we bless you and we worship you in spirit and in truth hallelujah 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 I, I promise you I'm trying to close out this service but something is stirring up the blessing is breaking some things off of us hallelujah clarity clarity in the name of Jesus clarity 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 no more confusion no more chaos clarity in the house clarity amongst the leaders clarity amongst those who work together we're not fighting each other we're fighting the adversary and the enemy and he's been defeated in the name of Jesus he gets no glory he gets no glory he has no legal right to what God has placed in the earth he has no legal right to the inheritance of those things he has no legal right no legal right no legal right to what God has called for us to have and what God has called for us to walk in Father, let your grace and let your glory rest upon your people. May we be empowered to do all that you've called us to be. May we be released, dear God. May we be released in your power, your authority. May you be glorified in all that we do or say. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you.